mentioned I am you with uh, the uh, Dominator dis dis Descent. I I'm not so sure if Sanji wants to fight Darcy Ceiling that, or the penalty zone, or even the implosion. But hey, new interactions uh, and possibly new results here for game number three. I think Sanji is most likely going for the penalty zone or uh, or the implosion. But yeah. then again, you know, in the previous couple of games where he has played Valentina, like he can get a little wild with it, right? So I think at this point of time, the early game is going to be so important, right? Fighting for these Litha Wanderers, as many neutral objectives as possible. The bigger ones, maybe let the first turtle go through, right? Get PX7 in a better position before considering uh, taking these fights. Yep, already you can see here Kid X pushing the boundaries of what he can do with a Tigreel. Uh, it's passive actually is a little better against a different mid duo because JP and Sanji both deal magic damage. So he's not as chunky uh, compared to like, let's say if that was a traditional tank roamer, you know, deals physical damage. Down bottom, you have Royal Milk versus Sanford. Uh, I, I can see why Sanford's kind of struggling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, no surprises here, right? Even Sanford himself is like, okay, I'm just going to have to wait until level four before we can really start trading against each other. And more so, he's not looking to win this lane. It's more so he wants to be able to match the lane against Royal Milk and still show up on time. And, well, I, I personally think that Liquid Echo, they're targeting Dax hard. He goes in, they've got so many different answers. Which makes his job oh. a little harder. Oh, no! Oh. PX7 gets broken down! Sanford! with a stolen penalty zone coming in against royal milk wailing away and they go up the response from royal milk as well with the flicker fade away all this while while they were playing defensively carl dc secures the turtle kid x able to survive flickers back can dax survive here can dax get away he has to give up his small camp nope still fighting for it and royal milk wow knocks out sanford I think Sanford's a little upset there. He's like, man, well, I mean, that body of the smooth is tougher than usual. Karth's easy. Should be able to find it. Yep, push him away. Wait, what? Oh, the body of Smith able to keep Royal Milk alive. Alongside a combination of his brave smite, keeping him topped up. Dax cleans up Ben as he tries to get away. Runs the opposite direction into Falcon Esports jungle. What's going on? I think we can safely say that Liquid Echo is feeling a little too comfortable here. Too the, comfortable. Way too comfortable. I mean, I, I have to admit, their decision making in terms of punishing their opponents, like Sanford flickering, knowing that Zask isn't level four. Without the Dominator's descent, he has no means of escape. Yep. And I think this is a wake-up call for Liquid Echo. Like, all right, we got to take it easy. Again, they are up now by about 300, 500 gold. And an instant replay. Okay, so he did heal up a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there was a level of Body of Smith uh, damage reduction that kept him alive from those heavy spin procs. That's so unfortunate. Oh, here we go. One more time. Up top, Kid X pulled in. Three-man kill squad from Liquid Echo. Was that necessary, Sanji? I felt like that was a bit overkill, including the IMU implosion on top of it all. But hey, a kill's a kill. and definitely kind of tells the rest of Liquid Echo, hey, we're not making any more mistakes. Let's guarantee these kills and get back into this game before we start getting comfortable again. Whatever gets the job done. Despite the fumbles from Liquid Echo, I can... I have a sense that Benny is playing very, very conservatively, like Benny from Myanmar, right? Because he's down on EXP. Uh, I'm not so sure what the gold situation is, but I can smell that Benny Cutie actually is a little bit more pushed forward. Now look at them racing down to the turtle. As Royal Milk and Carl Deasy wail away at it at less than half health. JP looking in. There's the ult, the implosion Ooh. coming through. Heavy spin. Tempest of Blade. All thrown out the window. Left and right. Sanji secures the turtle for his team as they all disperse. Ha! What? How? What? Why is Sanji the one picking up the turtle here? It just manages to survive despite two retributions. Sanji, by the way, is the one that picks up that neutral. And at this point in time, everybody's going to start pushing towards the top side of the map. But look at this one more time, right? The implosion comes through. Dax jumps in. And then we finally see uh, the stolen penalty zone actually getting involved. Sorry, Royal Milk coming in with a flicker with the penalty zone to kind of shake things up. And honestly, it's not that bad. I think that oh. Carl did a good job with the heavy spin. But now Dax, he's dead. <laughs> just snapped out of existence well all right there seems to be a, a fight that happened here just north of their purple jungle side and we can only assume what happened but regardless that is a huge loss for falcon esports that's a core hero that they shouldn't have afforded to have gone down uh, i have a theory as to what happened in that uh jungle uh, turtle fight oh. but we'll talk about it later after this implosion coming in sanji slain 
by PX7 serving up a kill. <gasps> the overkill on top of overkill. Both sides are like, we need to get the job done. We cannot allow our opponents to be walking away with a sliver of health. Guarantee these kills. Mm -mm. No quarter. Whatever they need to do to make sure that you go down and we find a conversion elsewhere. Because again, a man missing is a spot for Falcon Esports to rotate into. Mm -hmm. So if Sanji's gone, that means mid can be leaned hard into. And that allows them to keep this gold lead slightly manageable. A thousand in. Now JP in trouble. Force into that wall by a Benny. Oh, here comes the Zaman Force. Gets the kill in. That's a roamer. Taken down. But I think, yeah, JP will be back for the turtle, man. Yeah, he's going to be back for the turtle. At the same time, we are seeing Samford actually proxying the wave onto Royal Milk, right? So he's going to be on that turtle first. They can sit on top of it, and we'll see what Liquid Echo decides to do. For the first time, we are seeing that Falcon Esports up by two kills, five to three. But let's bring it back a little bit, right? Because this purple buff is such a big uh, objective for Falcon Esports that Liquid Echo consistently apply pressure. It's not just an objective, man. It's a necessity. It's like a mini lore for Dax, and if they don't get it on him, then they're fighting half cock. Check this out. The ult already spent in by PX7. Sanford checking the flank, making sure nothing comes out. Implosion coming in from Kid X. Royal Milk scores a kill on to Sanji. Now JP, Benny, and Carl walking away. Heavy spin. Oh, they're forced to be on the defense now. The Sanford attempts to burst down Dax. Kid X puts up a barrier, checking on JP. Sanford coming back to the scene. Dax scores the last turtle for his team. Flicker out by Sanford. Suddenly, Falcon Esports are alive. Oh, all right, all right. They're coming back, right? They finally dealt with the tilt. They're realizing, hey, this is our moment right now. If we succumb to pressure, then what does that say about us? Let's show Liquid Echo what we're all about. As we look at this replay here, look at this. Kid X gets three people with a Flicker implosion, catching three of the most important members that could disrupt the combo to begin with. Most importantly, they're still targeting Sanji. And Sanji is not all the better for it. He's actually down about 200, 300 gold from PX7, who himself hasn't really been having a cakewalk of a time in mid, right? PX7 has been working hard to make this off-meta hero a thing. And Carl Dizzy walks into that bush, gets pushed in, gets knocked up. PX7 looking for the free hits. Carl Dizzy forced to use a heavy spin defensively. Oh. He gets taken down by the alien dominator coming in from the galaxies. And now JP down to fifth of his health. Revenge strike by Royal Milk. Not enough damage to force a kill on the JP. And they send the cavalry packing. Falcon Esports on the aggressive. I think that Liquid Echo may have underestimated them a little too much. And again, all of this is just snowballing out of control from the earlier stages of the game, right? If we look at this replay one more time, this was a very interesting decision. I think they weren't expecting Royal Milk to show up for this fight because nobody was visible on the map at that point of time. Yeah, uh, what this tells me is Falcon Esports have to commit to their flickers like if mm -hmm. liquid echo haven't been counting flickers down to the second they have to now because so far back to back those are the team fights that falcon esports win for the time being after looking at the goal differences here benny qt just ever so slightly ahead of benny from falcon esports and that's the big insurance policy right but that's under a very large condition where the liquid echo could chunk out the members of falcon esports effectively they already have to deal with a bunch of stuff right kid x has his passive to naturally be tanky and benny qt will have to be wait patiently px7 is by far the most annoying hero to deal with for the entirety of the lineup of liquid echo so sanford if he's not targeting px7 he's looking towards dax and benny and for the most part, as long as he's standing around the little alien sentry target yeah. X7 has, then there's not much you can do. The slow from it is pretty obnoxious. Yep, and again, the damage that it deals, it, it's a, a combination of burst and DOT. So you have to really watch out. Royal Milk here, chunked down by Sanji and Carl. Kid X, check in the corners, clearing these corridors. And now the Lord... Dance continues. Interesting. We've been here about 10, 15 seconds now. It's bursting down Dax. Kid X, not really checking that northern part of the fight. Royal Milk, he's burning. Oh, here comes JP with a defying judgment. The implosion on the three and the pushback. Heavy spin by Carl Teasy. Here we go. Benny dancing on. Drops the seven for Sanford in trouble. Able to dash away. Dash looking for the secure. Gets the kill. Knocking out Terry Bogard. Straight out for Kid X. One for one so far. Where is this fight going? Lord gets hard reset. Liquid Echo, majority of them at half health. 
They're playing around their side as Falcon Esports. Only they're playing with fire, just staying here. I think they can rush this down, right? I mean, it's a 50-50. Good luck, Dax. Can they? Here comes Carl Deasy, looking for it. Secures the Lord, feels it away, but pays with his life. Oh, wow. You know what? For all intents and purposes, I'll say that's worth it. I think that's hella worth it. I mean, to be fair, Dax technically shouldn't be in that position anyways. When you're playing against an Akai, you want to be on the outer sides away from those walls. And he's got a two-level lead on top of Carl TZ, which again, very surprising, right? Dax has been power farming and also getting attacked in his own jungle. So coming to this point of time, we're seeing the big item power spikes. I'm expecting a BOD coming from Dax at any second now, but for the most part of it, they have taken off the shades, right? They're not tunnel visioning as hard. Royal Milk is doing one thing with PX7, but even KidX, he is opening his eyes to the rest of the map to see whether Liquid Echo is going to go for that two-pronged attack in game number two. And what makes it all the more dangerous for Liquid Echo is the fact that Royal Milk has his flicker P Benny has his Purify, and we're waiting about half a minute until Kid X gets his Flicker as well. So Liquid Echo have to all the more respect the potential for Falcon Esports to turn this fight upside down. The Divine Judgment on the Royal Milk. Try flickering into that, Liquid Echo says, as they force an ult out of PX7. This is a tough response from Falcon oh, Esports. What? Sanji coming in with a stolen implosion. Underneath, he gets punished by the turret. PX7 gets a kill. Sanford knocked out as well. Dax picks up. His BOD. Now he's gonna hurt a little bit more the conceal from Kidex. Spot Carl TZ. Where are you going? There's enough damage here. Looking for it. One more hit. Cow, oh, the killing spree for Dax. Falcon Esports are online. Uh, I, Liquid Echo is overheating. That was such a cool play, but between the Dominator's Descent, you basically, uh, you put him between two turrets, the Tier 1 and the ult coming in from PX7. And as much as JP was absorbing a little bit of the damage, uh, they quickly turned it around, like, great engage from Sanji's side, but was this the correct decision to make? I don't think so. I think that Liquid Echo was just being overly confident that Betty QT could clean things up as long as they are low, but they can't even get that done. I think this is coming off the back of that trade from... Carl Teasy. The Lord for Carl Teasy trade is at the same level of that level of aggression underneath Tier 1. They did not respect Falcon Esports' potential for a clapback, a massive clapback, and a cheap clapback at that. It cost him just but Benny's Purify. All the flickers are online. Yep, I, I think it's by far very worth it. This allows Falcon Esports to actually have a lot of tempo on Liquid Echo. In this upcoming next fight, they're expecting that JP is going to try and make a flicker play, but they have to really consider their options, right? Who walks out first? And I think it's always got to be Royal Milk. He is the most expandable because Kid X's ultimate on that implosion is so very important here, and if he goes down too soon into that fight, then you're hoping for a lot of Royal Milk in like 1v3 and hold off while the front line gets melted away by Daxon as well as Benny. Which is a bit of an oxymoron, a paradox, if you will, because if you want to burst down Royal Milk, you got to go all in. He has that passive. Uh, it's not like Royal Milk on the Terizla is a softy. So that gives Liquid Echo a lot to deal with. For the first time in this best of five, they're down uh, on kills, down on objectives, down on economy. So this Lord, I'm guessing Carl Deasy can't just willingly throw his body at it again. Not the way that the past Lord has gone, the past couple of Lords have gone. Well, I hope Dax has learned his lesson here, right? Don't stand too close to the wall, Don't, especially don't be inside of the pit. I think even from the previous patch, the traditional Akai versus Frederick matchup, that's the one thing you have to worry about. Now, ooh, okay, Bloodwings coming in from Benny. That's going to keep him alive for this upcoming fight. Nobody has been really able to close the distance on Benny so far as long as they are playing in the traditional front to back. Yep, check out this delayed entry by Benny Cutie, keeping himself scarce. I don't think Falcon Esports know that he's there. Here's the dance, a slight pull. Lord here at a third of its health. Royal Milk down to half. Oh no, are we approaching the point of no return? We might oh. even get a full on reset here. Uh, that's it. I mean, oh. this, this does favor Liquid Echo. This allows for them to reset their positioning and allows for them to do a little bit of wave management given that Falcon Esports pushed in mid, get a chunk of that mid tier two. Rather interesting. It looks like Falcon, uh, Falcon Esports now kind of probing at Liquid Echo is like, come on. Come on, Royal Milk is like he's half HP. He's walking up even further. He's taking the true damage from Lord as want. well. Yeah. That's what you want, right? So just jump on in. And even then, Fcon 
They are smart. Dax, not with that purple buff, makes all the difference in this fight. They can, they can deal with this and juggle it for as long as they want, and they might even get a split push in while they're at it. Yep, uh, their waves are uh, a little stronger, better positioned this time around. Whoa. And we see here Sanford cleaning up. Kid X spot in the back line. Here comes the Lord, secured by Carl TZ. Penalty zoned by Royal Milk, unable to punish. Carl TZ as he exits with a heavy spin, gets caught up by the implosion. A Tempest of Blades in as well. A lot of ults thrown in to punish Carl TZ. And now the ult from PX7 moving through. Benny Cutie, check out this angle. Coming in, jumping from the south. Ooh. Collapsing, intercepting. Benny with his Avon Force, displaced. Liquid Echo don't want to dance here, don't want to fight here. As JP and Sanji fight him through. JP gets his immortality popped in. And he's gonna go down here, unless they keep going! The shutdown by Benny Cutie! Ah, uh, but he gets taken down in trade, right? They both go down with the Luminous Lord starting to walk on out of here. Falcon Esports, they don't wanna start losing turrets for free at this point of time, but they need to start clapping back. Let Dax do his own thing. The rest of us, we gotta take this tier two. We've got some housekeeping. That's a super expensive comeback from Liquid Echo. Sure, they scored the Lord. Sure, they got a couple kills on the way out, but they paid the price, man. Look, the map became blue because of what they just did or because of what Falcon Esports did to respond to their short-term comeback. I think they understand that if they let that Lord start to push out the way that it did and Falcon Esports start walking up, they're going to be able to start stealing away the economy here, right? They can start stealing jungle camps, for an example. And I think that Liquid Echo wants to minimize that damage by trading proactively against Falcon Esports to keep them on their toes. But let's look at the gold distributions here because overall, we are seeing that both uh, both gold laners are basically getting to their full build. I think at this point, 45 to 50,000. Okay, so that means Benny is, has extra surplus money for item swapping. Benny doesn't have that benefit just yet. But I don't think Benny Cutie needs it. Looking at the way he's built right now, he just needs a better entry into a fight. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, he went in where Falcon Esports were clumped up, only half of them at half health. So he's not making the most of the Sky Piercer, not making the most of the Blade of Despair. And I don't know where Liquid Echo can find that angle because they have to set it up the hard way. Carl TZ is putting the objectives on his back. Like, he's throwing his life and body at these things and is willing to die. So that's one member of yours. There's no other peel. There's no other real way to fight front uh, to back against Falcon Esports, who can basically draw a straight line through you. Exactly. And I think that Carl TZ is going to be the big player here who needs to kind of disrupt that positioning, right? But what's the most ideal? You're going to have Royal Milk kind of isolated by himself, maybe even Kid X, right? But at the same time, I think the the most opportune moment probably will be having a fight by the pit or in lane. Once you start getting to those choke points in the jungle, as much as Carl TZ is like, maybe I can get like a three-man like lockdown. I think that is more beneficial for Falcon Esports now that you're in tight corners. Yeah, I, I, I'd reckon maybe fight where there's no objective. Fight when it's actually just heroes. Because the fact that Carl TZ has to think about his opponents and the major objective makes it a tougher call for Liquid Echo, because they also have to perfect the art of the turn. Now Carl Tizi here, sandwiched by three. PX7, Kid X, and Benny. I wonder if he knows. He might just be baiting this out. Oh. Royal Mick responds. Look at the back line. Royal Mick catches three. JP taken down. PX7 secures a kill. In comes Dak with the delayed response. The implosion giving Benny Cutie a kill. On to Benny, and Carl Tizi now down three for none so far. Falcon Esports are soaring. I think they might be able to close out this game here. They got a, uh, they've got two Ballista Minions walking up to this crystal. Sanford, you gotta do something. Oh no, that's it. Underneath the base, Salmon Force, Spell.